Okay, the topic that we're going to deal with is called group policy. And group policy is one of the most powerful concepts in Active Directory, or what we call it as ADDS. Now, when you talk about a client, there are two aspects to the client. One is the computer. The other one is the user. We really don't think about it in that way. For us, the computer and the user are both the same, but not for Active Directory. For ADDS, the computer and user are different. Let me show you that actually. So I'll log into this machine. This is my domain controller, I believe. So now I'll log in. So this is my domain controller, and uh, I will now get into Active Directory. So I'll click on Tools, and I will go to Active Directory Users and Computers. What I can also do is, what I can also do is, let, let me also do it. If I go to the command prompt, right? Oh, this is a PowerShell prompt actually, dsa.msc. This is a shortcut to open the same console, Active Directory Users and Computers. So if I do dsa.msc, it opens up the Active Directory Users and Computers console. Now this shows me my domain. My domain goes by the name of adatum.com. And I want to show you something. If you remember, we typically work with this client called London Client 1. And if I click on Computers, you'd actually see an account for that computer. So the computer is defined as a computer. Why? There might be some user who's going to use this computer. So let's say there's this user called Aaron, for example, who's going to use this computer, right? Or let's say this, there's this user called Blaine who's going to use this computer. So they are going to be the uh, users who are going to log into that computer. So please understand, there's a difference. There's a difference between a computer and a user. It's like saying, it's like saying you have a house and you have people who stay in that house maybe uh, two parents right and two children for example they're staying in that house now please understand the house is different the house is like your computer and these parents and two children they are like your users so similarly why am i telling you this is that i can target i can target this computer i can target this user meaning i can target some kind of restrictions that are going to going to be for the computer and i can target some kind of restrictions for the users i can do that so you can have some restrictions for your home. You can have some kind of security for your home. Or you can have different levels of security for the parents or the children. So children, uh, for the parents, the children will say, okay, you can't go into this room, you can't go into that room or whatever. And you can have a security for the house that says, okay, my gate is going to be locked or whatever, something like that. But then whatever the security for the house applies to everybody, while you can have different settings for parents and children, you can have something like this. So please get the logic. Get the logic is that, you can have restrictions for a computer, you can have a restriction for a user also. They're two different things. Think of the computer as your house. Think of user as people who come into the house. So different people can use this computer. Maybe there are shifts. Maybe there are eight hour shifts. In one eight hour shift, one user is coming and logging to the computer. Another eight hour shift, another user is coming and logging into this computer. Coming back to this concept of group policy, what exactly is group policy? And I've been stating that it's one of the most powerful concepts in Active Directory. Group policy, you can think about it as a complete set of maybe restrictions, I'm saying maybe restrictions, or some kind of settings that you want. Restrictions could be something like this, like uh, if there's a user from HR by the name of HR1, his name is HR1, for example, and he, this person logs in, and I want to make sure that when this person logs in, the control panel is blocked. I don't want him to see the control panel. He doesn't need this. But maybe when there, there is some kind of administrator, maybe an L1 admin who needs to do some troubleshooting task, when this person logs in, I want them to see the control panel. So that's known as restrictions. Or maybe it could be some set of settings that you want to give to this computer. Maybe you want something like, like by which uh, for this particular computer, maybe there's a certain service and uh, for this computer you want it to be disabled. Maybe you want to disable the Windows firewall. Maybe you want to disable the Windows firewall, for example, because you're using a third-party firewall and you want to disable that service. So that's a kind of restriction or that's, that's a kind of setting you want to give. Maybe you want to get into the registry and add a certain entry in the registry that your application requires. So these are things that you can do to group policy. So group policy is a list of restrictions. It's a list of settings that you want to give either to a computer either to a user. Now, to work with group policy. Now, if you notice already in this environment, you have something called development, you have IT, you have managers. And if you notice the icons are a bit different, 
while this one is different the computer's icon and the development icon is different why are they different because computers is typically a folder and then one that you see development or one that you see as it one that you see as managers and marketing those uh, specific folder with specific icon they're not folder they are actually known as in active directory they are known as organizational units what is an organizational unit i'll talk about that but if you want to create an organizational unit you right click the domain and you say new organizational unit but let me talk about what it is before that what is an organizational unit in fact it's very simple most of you must have already got an idea but i still want to explain an organizational unit is something by which you can define all the kind of divisions that you have in your organization or all the kind of departments you have in your organization. So maybe you've got the sales department, maybe you've got the HR department or finance and you want to define this in Active Directory and the best way that you can define this in Active Directory is to create something, a container known as an organizational unit. So an organizational unit called sales will have users and computers, right, from sales. An organization, is called, an organization unit called HR can have users and computers from HR. So you can kind of bifurcate people based on their functions or anything else that you can think about. You, if you want to think about locations, do that. You can be very flexible with this. And the best part about an organization unit is that, is that you can set a group policy for it. You can define a group policy for an organization unit. So I can define a policy only for sales. I can apply a group policy on an OU. But I couldn't do it on that folder. If you see, there is a folder, there's a folder. No policies on these folders. You can define a policy only on an organizational unit. Like development is an OU out here, which you can see the icon very clearly, I hope. So I can put a group policy out here. I can put on a group policy of, out here. But if I see something like this, which is a folder, no. No group policy is possible on this. So, so why would you create an organizational unit? Firstly, you want to bifurcate people based on certain criteria that you're thinking about and secondly you want to apply some kind of policy on them that's the reason why you would create group policies not only that the best part of this whole thing is that you can actually build a hierarchy you can build a hierarchy like okay you've got sales no doubt this is an OU but under sales you might be having multiple locations right maybe Hyderabad is one on one location maybe Chennai as another location maybe Bangalore as another location and then you put in the people from Hyderabad here, you put in the people from Chennai out here, you put in the people from Bangalore out here, and maybe you can have a policy here that defines your organization policy, and you can have different policy for Hyderabad, you can have different policy of Chennai, different policy for Bangalore, you can have that. So this is another benefit of an organization unit that you can build a hierarchy. So I'm going to show you right now is how to create an organizational unit. Right. So I think I showed you that, but already I'm going to show it to you again. So right click and new organizational unit. It's a very simple process. Click organizational unit. Give a name to this organizational unit. And uh, let's say I call the students, for example, students organization unit. So I can put all students in here and I click on OK. And there the organizational unit is created. Simple. I want to create users in this. Right click new user i can do that now you know how to create a user i can just move somebody from here so let's let me go to my marketing let's move this guy adam from here and i'll move it to students or you students students where are they where are they where are they scroll down scroll down here okay and i click on okay done and if i click on students i see this person all right let me also tell you another thing is that this console is an old console actually activity users and computers is an old console over a period of time Microsoft has, has designed a new web-based console, which you will see out here. If I click on Tools to manage Active Directory, one of the first options, Active Directory Administrative Center. You can also use the Active Directory Administrative Center to do the same things that I just showed you right now. So if I click on Active Directory Administrative Center, let it open up and we'll see. So I'll open up the screen, maximize this. I can see adatum.local, which is my domain, and you can see almost the same thing. You see the manager's OU, you can see the marketing OU, right? And uh, if you want to create a new OU, right click the domain and you say new organization unit. All the same things that you can do in the other console, you can do it out here. All right. Now, my goal out here is to show you a group policy, how to work with group policy. Let's do that. Let's do that, how to work with group policy. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up one. Oh, we, we pick up the students OU itself. All right. So students OU that we just created right now. And Adam is the user. 
Let me see how Adam, Adam is logging in ads. Please understand the name and the way the user logs in are, can be different. So if I click on properties and if I go to account, can you see this is the user logon name? Can you see the name and the user logon name? So when you log in, you don't you don't log in as Adam Bar, you, you log in as Adam at the rate adatum.com. So please understand just because you see a username out here and this uh, username is also known as UPN user principal name so if anybody tells you what ask you what is the user principal name is the lower name at the rate the domain name that's known as the user principal name okay so now that you know this I'll click on okay to this and now what are we going to do right we are going to create a policy and I'm thinking of creating a policy to block the control panel for students maybe they don't need it so to do that, what I need to do is I need to go to go to a console called Group Policy Management. So I will click on Tools and 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 where do I see? Oh, here it is, Group Policy Management. So I go into Group Policy Management out here. I open the console for Group Policy Management. I wait for it to open up. Sometimes what happens is it opens up and remains below down the screen. And here it is. Can you see? It's just below, right? And I click on it. It's hiding there. All right. So now I bring up the screen. I can see editum.com. I can see my domain that I'm working with, editum.com. Yes, I'm going to double click on it now. And here, this is the group policy console. And this is from where you set policies on what people can do, what people cannot do, what they can see, what they cannot see. So what am I going to do? I'm going to click on students, right? And once I go into students, I don't see any policy. So in order to create a policy, I'm going to right click here. And if you notice, there's an option called create a GPO in this domain and link it here. You might be thinking about the word GPO. I don't hear this. I don't know this. GPO means group policy object simple so create a gp on this domain and link it here that's what i want to do yes i want to do it. and i want to create a policy to 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 block 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 the control panel block cp i click on okay to this i click on okay to this so i just give a name click on okay right but did i define any settings in the policy not as yet i just gave a name and clicked on okay so to define any policy settings what am i going to do i am going to right click on this i'm not going to right click on this and I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to click on edit. And once I right click, click on edit, I can see it being divided into two, two categories. I can see the policy screen being divided into two categories. Computer configuration, user con I told you, I mentioned out to you, computers can have a different setting. Users can have a different setting. If you remember, in that OU, we have a user by the name of Adam. We don't have a computer. We have got a user. And that's the reason why I'm going to only look at user configuration. So, and then... I click on policies because this this is where I'm going to find out what policies people have right and from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Windows settings right and I'm going to look into wait a minute Windows Windows settings now please understand this uh, group policies is a vast subject there are different levels of settings and you possibly cannot remember all of them not possible so you just got to think about what you want and see if it's there in group policy. It's not that you can study it completely. Okay. And there are around probably 3,500 to 4,000 different settings in group policy. So just know it is humongous. I'm thinking about blocking the control panel. Where am I going to find it? I'm going to find it in a place called administrative template. So most of the things that you're thinking about to do in an OS, in an operating system, maybe you're thinking about blocking maybe the drives or something like that. They don't, you don't want people to see the C drive, D drive. You can do that also. You will find it here, administrative templates. And here, right here below, I see control panel. Yes, this is what I'm looking at, control panel. I want to see that. And again, you have different other settings inside control panel. But I don't want everything. I just want one which says prohibit access to control panel. So I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to double click on this. And I'm going to select this as enabled. I want to enable the setting which blocks access to control panel. I enable that setting that will block control panel. I click on apply, click on OK, done. My setting is done and all I need to do is I now need to close this, close this, close this, close. And now what do I need to do? I need to go to the client and log in as Adam. So let me go to the client machine and I will log in as Adam. So I will do a control on delete and uh, oh, I'll click on this arrow, switch user, other user, and the user that I'm going to log in as it's going to be Adam slash Adam and give a password was all right we logged in as Adam and while the user is logging in I'm sure the policy has been applied in the back end and now here what I'm going to do is in this in in the start button I'm going to search for control panel yes control panel 
and let me click on control panel and open it and what do I see? We see that we cannot get into control panel under normal circumstances any user is able to get into control panel even if you're a normal user but here this user is not able to get into control panel why? because I have restricted I have put in a policy on the OU to block the control panel. So this is how you implement group policies.